Hello, Word of Christ family, and welcome. We want to welcome you uh, to your home group this week. It is so good to be with you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us, and thank you for joining us um, as we're part of this amazing community that's growing in faith, that's growing in our understanding of God's master plan. This is week 11, and another powerful week for us as we continue to study this powerful truth that's building this foundation getting this deep understanding and foundational truth um, for God's master plan for mankind. And if we don't understand his master plan, everything else that we layer on top of it doesn't really add up. And so it's so foundational for us to really fundamentally understand uh, from the very beginning of time what was on the heart of the Father um, for mankind. And so it's been a joy to go through this journey and to discover this in scripture and to have the spirit of God reveal it in our hearts. I want to remind you, for those of you that are local here in Florida, of our upcoming two events that we're so excited about. On the 27th of this month of March, we're having our family day um, and the details will be on the screen. On there, you'll see it's a chance for you to come out with your family. We're going to have a great time of just fellowship. We'll have some music playing. We'll be able to catch up and talk in person. You can bring your lounge chair, take a nap in the sun, enjoy the time together as a family. We'll get to talk and to fellowship together. It'll be awesome. We're going to ask you to bring a food. It'll be brunch time between breakfast and lunch. So bring something for you and your family um, that you can enjoy and be with us as we fellowship together and, and enjoy our time together. And then following after that is our resurrection celebration service on April the 4th. And so we're so excited about this. This will be a Sunday. Again, the details are on here. The address, the mailing address is a little bit differently, but those of you that are familiar with our area, this is right on State Road 70, right across um, from Chick-fil-A. It is on the southbound side of State Road 70. is Country Inn and Suites. We have a room reserved there for, for our community and for our family. And we'll be together celebrating the resurrection of our Lord together. It's going to be an awesome time. And I can't wait to share with you what the Lord's put on our heart. Uh, and so please plan on being with us those two weeks. It's going to be an awesome time as we continue to strengthen our family and, and be together. And with that, let's get ready um, for Masood as he takes us through week 11. God bless you, family. Hey, everyone. This is Masood Ramandi, and I'm happy to be back after a few weeks uh, with another session from our new series, God's Master Plan. So far, we have covered from Genesis 1 to Genesis 11. We've gone through the story of Adam and Eve. We've gone through the story of Abel and, Abel and Cain, and then the story of Noah, and then eventually the story of Babylon. And we've seen that how everything actually starts with the story of a seed and grows to become something uh, in a bigger scale. So. Uh, as God planted everything as a seed in the beginning and caused them to grow, so also he said to man, he said, uh, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, on the evil side, we see that actually the uh, human effort that started with uh, Cain and how he tried to actually make something out of the ground that was cursed and cause that to give something and out of that to bring an offering to the Lord, uh, to be recognized uh, that one person became eventually a whole nation, a kingdom called Babylon in chapter 11. And in that story, uh, what happened was actually they tried to make for themselves a name by becoming a city. That's what it actually says. Rose talked to you about this uh, in the last session. But today I'm going to show you that actually uh, out of that effort uh, and the, na the whole nation that was made, God called someone out and he started with him again something in the form of a seed and his purpose was to put an end to everything that man was doing and to build something that he himself wanted to do, which was to actually have a city, a kingdom, this time not of the earth, not of human effort, but of God and to give them a name, not the name that they make for themselves, but the name of the Father on them that everyone should be called sons of God or a son of God. So let's quickly get into this message. So in uh, Genesis chapter 12, we read the story of Abraham, and which is, by the way, Abraham. And Abraham means an exalted father. Uh, 
uh, God comes to Abraham in uh, chapter 12 and he says, uh, let me actually read this quickly for you. Uh, Genesis chapter uh, 12. It says, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Okay, so here when it says, Get out of your country, from your family, when you look at the word family, it literally means uh, from your birth, or you can say from your birthplace. The same word is translated as native land in the previous chapter. Okay, so the same word that is as family is native land in chapter 11, verse 28. And why this is important? Because this shows us where Abraham came from. Okay, so God says, get out of your family or from your birthplace. And chapter 11 says where his birthplace was. Look at verse uh, 27. Uh, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, uh, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot. Uh, and Haran died before his father Terah in his native land, in Ur of Chaldeans. So the native land, the birthplace of Abraham was, uh, he says, the Ur of Chaldeans. Or uh, if you do a study, you'll see that this is the land of Babylon. So God comes to Abraham in the land of Babylon. And he says, get out of this land. Okay, so that's the first thing that I want you to see. Uh, so I'm going to put this actually on the board that uh, there was a land called Babylon. And then uh, God says, I'm going to take you to another land. Okay, so uh, let me show you actually what the other land is. Look at uh, chapter 12, verse it says then Abraham took Sarah his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their possessions and they uh, that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in Haran and they departed to go to the land of Canaan so they came to the land of Canaan so this is the land of Canaan Okay. I talked to you about this when Noah actually uh, had a son whose son was called also Canaan and he called, he cursed Canaan and I said, God said, uh, I will take you there into the land of Canaan and he said that would be actually your promised land because the land that was cursed, God wanted to reverse the curse and bless this land. So God comes and he says, Abraham, I want you to come out of this land of Babylon and I want to take you here. And he said he, what he is going to do. He said the same thing that Babylonians try to achieve. Uh, and I confused their tongue and I brought an end to their efforts. I give you by promise. Okay. And he said what that is. He said I will give you a name and make, make your name great and uh, actually um, uh, make you a great nation and all. Uh, nations shall be blessed through you. So here we have actually a name and a nation. Okay, so as I said, Abraham's name uh, was uh, first Abraham, and then God comes and he says, uh, I change your name to Abraham. And the change is this, the, from the meaning uh, an exalted father to the father of many nations someone that was esteemed high, God comes and actually takes him uh, and makes him the father of many nations. Because of what re one reason? Because there is something about uh, the seed that we are going to uh, see. So when God comes and he says, okay, um, I will make you a great nation. Uh, what do you expect the first thing in the natural? To have many children. Because how can you have a nation without having children? Yet it says Abraham was without a child and while Abraham is without a child God comes and in chapter 13 verse um, 15 he tells him uh, sorry verse 16 he says and I will make your uh, descendants which is the word seed as the dust 
of the earth okay so he says abraham now let me tell you something this nation thing let me just uh i'm gonna actually put three here so i'm going to make your seed as the dust of the earth okay what does that mean what is the first mention where is the first mention of the word dust in uh in the bible it's genesis chapter 2 verse 7 it says god formed man out of the dust dust of the ground so when god comes and he says abraham uh, this promise that i'm giving you is actually for all the dust of the earth simply man all men okay doesn't matter what kind of man every uh, one okay so God comes and he says there was a nation that was entirely Babylon I take you out one person and I will make you a great nation and this just as you came out of Babylon and they were all dust and you are dust I'm going to actually take you something different and through you make them also to have a change a transformation so anyways after this abraham still is a, is childless there is a promise to have a great nation to have a great name but that's not happening chapter 15 we read after these things the word of the lord came to abraham in a vision saying do not be afraid abraham i am your shield and your exceedingly great reward but abraham said lord god what will you give me seeing i go childless and the heir of my house is eliezer of damascus then abraham said uh, look you have given me no offspring the word offspring is seed he says hey you've been talking to me about seed over and over and over you said you make me a great nation and all of that hmm, where is it like i'm not experiencing that you have given me no seed indeed one born in my house is my heir and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your seed be so shall your seed be like what this time as the stars of heaven not any more dust of the earth okay so right after that is the famous verse which is quoted several times in the new testament verse 6 and he believed in the lord and he accounted to him for righteousness okay so he says and who is a righteous person uh Galatians and Romans actually have so many verses on this subject but it says it's where your identity is revealed by God he tells you who you are and you believe it and that is actually righteousness so he says this is the place of uh, where actually you you begin to see things according to the promises of God you believe that you don't try to make a name for yourself you realize eventually in the book of Revelation we see this that the name of the father is on you so you don't have to make yourself something he said i will bless you he said i have created you he said i have redeemed you so if you believe that just like abraham this is a place that you are righteous okay so right after that this same abraham who believed entertains doubt why because chapter 16 uh, verse 3 uh, says at the end of verse 3 says Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan so he says uh, he was here and God brought him here and he gave him a promise and 10 years passed and nothing had happened yet so Abraham entertains some doubt okay like anybody else and he says okay it's not happening what do we do and he gets some help from his wife like Adam got help from Eve and look at what happens chapter 16 verse 1 now Sarai Abraham's wife had borne him no children and she had an Egyptian uh, maidservant whose name was Hagar so Sarai said to Abraham see now the Lord has restrained me from bearing children 
uh, please go into my maid perhaps I shall obtain children by her and Abraham heeded the voice of Sarai then Sarai's Abraham's wife took Hagar her maid uh, the Egyptian and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife and after Abraham had after Abraham had dwelled uh, 10 years in the land of Canaan okay so he says uh, there something happened the second wife came in and out of her another one was born but not according to what God had promised and Abraham had believed this time something else was born so God had talked to Abraham only about the stars of heaven okay but after this because we see that actually um, something uh, happened through Hagar another seed came in and in chapter 22 it's called the sand of the sea let's look at here chapter 22 verse 17 blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply uh, your descendant which is seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the sea so he says I promised you uh, to actually have a, um, uh, a seed as the stars of heaven but because you went to Hagar you brought another seed out of your own efforts and that's called the sand of the sea okay sand of the sea so this is where human effort comes in this is where unrighteousness comes in this is where relying on your own works comes in and I mean I talked to you about this I think it was the second session of God's master plan but anyways uh, now I want you to see something about this that uh, later in the New Testament actually all these things find a meaning and uh, they go beyond symbolism they become actually a realities in the form of righteousness promised faith children of flesh children of the spirit and we're going to get into that but before that I'm going to show you uh, that actually this story uh, uh, didn't end here okay uh, after they uh, basically Abraham out of he came out of Babylon he came into this land Canaan eventually uh, he he had uh, children born to him Isaac and um, uh, basically uh, Ishmael and Isaac was the child of the promise he was the star of heaven and out of him the 12 uh, tribes the 12 sons uh, of Israel were born uh, actually from his son from Jacob the 12 sons were born and they formed a nation and that nation quickly we know the story of Joseph how they actually tried to murder him and uh, he was sold to Egyptians and he went to Egypt and he became uh, actually the second ruler in the entire nation and then at the time of famine the whole nation of Israel went there because they were looking for uh, wheat for bread and we know the story eventually Joseph was known to his uh, family and all of that but point being the whole nation left the land of the promise and they entered somewhere called Egypt okay so uh, they were in that place for 400 years and God had said actually in chapter uh, let me show you chapter 14 I believe uh, chapter 15 after uh, Abraham believed God says what's what was gonna happen look at um, chapter 15 verse 13 it says then he said to Abraham uh, know certainly that your seed will be strangers in a land that is not theirs Egypt and will serve them Egyptians and they will afflict them for 400 years so this is like way before even Isaac is born God is talking about what was going to happen uh, and also the nations whom they serve I will judge which is the nation of Egypt afterward they shall come out with great possessions uh, so he says they come out now as for you you shall go okay uh, let's go to okay let's stop here so what happens 
uh, Moses was born and Moses was actually called by God and Moses goes and brings the whole nation of Egypt out, uh, nation of Israel out of Egypt and he brings them to uh, he calls them to return but they first come to a place called wilderness and then they return here okay so uh, something happens in that story the reason i'm saying because i'm following the story of the seeds these are uh, this is the story of the seeds okay so uh, in uh, deuteronomy chapter one uh, moses and the nation of Israel have been in wilderness for approximately 40 years because they didn't obey the voice of the Lord. They didn't uh, go to possess the land that God had said to them. Uh, so they've been in wilderness for about 40 years. And Moses is recounted, recounting the story. And he says in uh, Deuteronomy chapter, I believe, 1, something about... Uh, the seed. Look at chapter 1 and verse uh, see, uh, verse 8. It says, okay, verse 10 actually. Uh, the Lord your God has multiplied you and here you are today as the stars of heaven in multitude. So Moses says the promise that uh, God gave to Abraham as there's stars of heaven, you nation of israel you are that stars of heaven and anytime after that you see the story of uh, the sand of the sea now it's anytime that the enemies of na nation of israel are mentioned so the sands of the sea always are the enemies of uh, actually uh, this uh, nation of god the stars of heaven so uh, for example actually you can see this in uh, I think Joshua, uh, look at Joshua chapter 11, verse 4. It says, So they went out, they and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude. So he says, These are the enemies that are going to fight with the nation of Israel. And he says, They were as the sand of the sea. There are a few other places. You can see this in 1 Samuel. You can see this in uh, judges that also talks about the sand of the sea as being the enemies of God. Now, something happens. So what I was trying to say, uh, they became the stars. So this is uh, continuing. And God says, your seed will be like the stars, but then eventually they will be like the sand. Uh, and they go out uh, to possess the land of Israel, the land of Canaan, and they do. And David destroys all the enemies. So in this land, all the enemies are destroyed. And he dies. His son Solomon comes in. And he actually builds the temple. Uh, and that's where every promise of God was fulfilled. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, because uh, I don't want the lessons to actually be lengthy. Uh, so you have some time to actually digest all of these things to even have a conversation around this uh, i'm going to say some of the things but i won't actually take you through the bible uh, but you can actually do a search and find them hopefully actually i would be able to give you uh, the uh, reference and you can uh, read this for yourself so um <clears throat> And this is it. When God, uh, in chapter 15, he talked to Abraham and he believed and he said, okay, this land I'm giving you to your seed. He said what the boundaries of their land, their inheritance was going to be. And he said it's between the great river Euphrates to uh, the river of Egypt. Guess what? This is where the river Euphrates is, is in Babylon. And this is Egypt, okay? So he said, this is going to be where these two rivers actually determine the boundary. So the river uh, Euphrates and the river Egypt. Okay, so river Euphrates and river Egypt. 
And when you read the story of Solomon, this promise, it is mentioned to be fulfilled, which means he ruled over all the land. It says from the great river Euphrates to river Egypt. Okay, so Solomon was the time that the promise of God given to Abraham was fully fulfilled. Okay, so he said, I will make you a great nation. This is naturally, physically, this is, there is a greater which is actually the only point that we should take from the story. But first, I'm going to show you the natural fulfillment of the promise of God through the nation of Israel. And he says, uh, God said, I will make you like the stars of heaven. Your seed will be like the great uh, stars of heaven. I will make you a great nation. Your name will be great. Kings shall come from your loin. All of them were happening. And he said, even the land, uh, this land I will give you from this river to that river and at the time of Solomon every one of them you can read them you can study them in uh, first Kings everyone was fulfilled and that's the time that uh, the corruption starts uh, growing or actually uh, corruption in a new level starts and let me show you in that time what does God say about uh, these people so look at chapter First King chapter 4, this is the time of Solomon. Verse 20 says, Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sands of the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and rejoicing. So he says, no longer stars of heaven. They themselves had become the sands of the sea. Now look at the beauty of this. Look at uh, Romans chapter I believe it's in chapter uh, 9. Yeah, look at chapter 9. It says, uh, verse 27, Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel, saying, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. Verse 29, and Isaiah, uh, as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we should have become like Sodom and we should have become, be made like Gomorrah. Okay, so he says that um, when the number of the children of Israel becomes as the sand of the sea, there would be a remnant. And that remnant would be, and that remnant is the seed that unless the Lord had left us this seed, we should have all become like Sodom and Gomorrah. We should have all become fleshly. Okay. And guess what that seed is? It must be a star because God promised to Abraham, he said, look at the heavens. This is the one that will actually uh, be the heir. This one would be the one that would actually uh, receive the inheritance this is the one that will come from your loin now let's look at uh, this that in uh, let's why don't you take you to Matthew directly but uh, I'm tempted to take you to numbers to another prophecy first and then see the fulfillment of this let's look at numbers chapter 24 this is uh, Balaam uh, he's prophesying uh, in verse 15, after being corrected by God, finally he says, So he took up his oracle and said, The utterance of Balaam, the son of Beor, and the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened, the utterance of him who hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the visions of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not now. I behold him but not near, a star shall come out, out of Jacob. A star shall come out of Jacob. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. Jesus was the star 
that was left as the remnant so that through him now all the nations are being blessed okay so what was the stars the children that are born the children of promise and what was the sand of the sea children of flesh you can call this actually spirit so children according to spirit and children according to the flesh so we come to galatians uh, let's quickly look at galatians chapter 3 to see now the beauty of this story uh, chapter 3 verse uh, 16 it says now to abraham and his seed where the promises were made he does not say and to seeds as of many but as of one and to your seed this is the quote uh, from genesis who is christ okay now look at verse 29 and if you are christ's then you are abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise meaning the stars of heaven okay this refers to those the seed which is christ okay so he says being part of the body of christ being one with christ being united with christ is the story of the stars of heaven and the rest are the sands of the sea now this is important no one was a star of heaven that means no one was the seed okay that means it's not to say okay these are the sands of the sea and that's it and uh, they will remain uh, the sand of the sea no uh, it's going to be actually even there is a promise let me quickly say this and end with this and we're going to pick up uh, where we left off in the next lesson let's look at uh, maybe uh, Hosea would be a good place yeah uh, same thing Hosea um, verse 10 yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured or numbered and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them you are not my people there it shall be said to them you are the sons of the living God okay because it says the same sands of the sea are going to be called the stars of heaven but there is going to be a change and he says that's Roman says actually that's when uh, we come to actually be persuaded like Abraham was persuaded because God said look at there look at the seed the stars can you believe that's who you are can you believe that's the promise I have given you and he says once you believe that this is the change that you're left off your eyes are left off from the earth and put into uh, the heavens where Christ is that's where who that that's where you are seated so uh, just to wrap up this session uh, is to say when God came to Abraham he said he promised to him that there would be, uh, first of all, all the men, all uh, children of men, all born of flesh and blood, uh, called the dust of the earth to be blessed. And he said, uh, I'm going to actually bring the uh, uh, stars to bless the sands. So two seeds uh, also represented by the two covenants. The first covenant eventually is the sands of the sea, the children born according to the first covenant and the uh, new covenant is the children according to the promise which is uh, basically the stars of heaven and this story started with one uh, star uh, which is Jesus the Christ the firstborn and through him all the rest shall be blessed I hope uh, this was clear uh, this was about the story of the seeds but we're gonna pick up on this star the, the story of this seed this star that okay what is the promise that was made to this seed and we're going to pick up from this until then uh, peace grace and love from the father and may you have an amazing time and great conversations uh, with the presence of the lord himself 
Hi, Word of Christ, and thank you, Masood, for that tremendous teaching. That was awesome. Um, we call this message Following the Seeds. It was all about the seeds that we see and the promise of the seed to Abraham. And uh, there's so much goodness in there. And, and as usual, uh, Masood touched on some things that you can go down and you can really study and understand at, at a deeper level. But let's look at this. I have five recap points that I want you to take away with this. Uh, they're so powerful, and I want these to be clear to you. As we start to see the continue to see the revelation of Christ, everything in Scripture points to Christ. We've seen this with the flood of Noah, with the story of Cain and Abel, and the sacrifice of Abel. Um, we see this in all through the stories and the accounts and the teachings that we've done, is how the Scripture is really given to reveal Christ. And even in this story of Abraham's seed, we see not only Christ in that promise, we see ourselves in that promise. And that's exciting. So let's look at this. The first point for us to remember, and the first point of takeaway, is that Abraham's seed was to be as a dust of the earth. And so we read this in Genesis chapter 13, verse 16. Abraham's promise was intended for all men, for all nations, for all those that came. We see that God promises his seed as the dust of the earth. And we know the dust of the earth to be that's what man was created for. So with the created being of man, that's what, no, uh, that's what Abraham, Abraham's uh, promise was intended for. And the second point is this, is that Abraham, Abraham believes and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And so we see this in scripture. We see it in the New Testament. It's something that we talk about a lot about, but it's so important to understand this on this level. The thing that was promised to Abraham was very clear in Genesis 15, verse 16. He promised, and the thing that he believed, the thing that he set his heart on, the thing that he set his faith on would be that his descendants, his seed, would be plentiful as the stars of heaven. It's very clear about that promise. And he said when he did that, when he stretched his faith, when he connected his belief to that promise of the Father, even before everything that he seed, said at that moment, he saw what the Father promised him, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Link this back to what we understand righteousness to be. It's our proper standing. So we can look at this and we can say that our proper standing is when we believe. When we believe the promise that God has from us, that is accounted to us. Uh, as our righteousness. And that's when we see it. That's when we extend our faith. And that's when the Father looks at us and says, okay, now you're in right standing because you believe my promise towards you. That's good family. I hope you get a hold of that and believe that and, and walk in that. And then the third thing that I think it's important for us to take away here is that Abraham's own effort produces another seed, which a scripture calls the sands of the seas. And so we see this Abraham goes weary. Um, he's waiting for the promise of his seed. He's with, his, Sarah, he's with his, his wife, Sarah, and they don't have a child for an extended period of time. And so he, he takes things into his own hands and he says, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move into my own works. And the thing that that produces is his son, Ishmael, right? And the Bible later calls that, and he says in Genesis 22, verse 17, that at first, the promises was that his descendants and his seed would be the stars of heaven. And now Christ turns around and says, look, because of this, of what you have done, um, your promise is not only the stars of heaven, but now there's this other seed and he calls it the sands of the seas. Um, and we understand that to be uh, the fruit of what he produced out of his own flesh with his wife and from the maidservant Hagar. And so the fourth point is this, is that Jesus is a star that comes out of Jacob that was left uh, for the remnant so that through him, all the nations would be blessed. We saw Balaam prophesied this and Masood brought this out. And then this is a story that is known as a, the classic Christmas story um, when they said this, show us the star that we see in the east. And that star, that star is Jesus that comes um, out of Jacob. That's the promise and that's the prophecy that we read. And then the fifth point and the final point is this, is that being part of the body of Christ, we are the heirs according to the promise of Abraham. 
So if Jesus Christ is the star and he's the firstborn out of many, we become the stars in the heaven that is promised to Abraham to be in covenant with the father, to be in righteousness, to be in proper standing, to walk in relationship and in glory with the father. That is our heir. That is our promise. That is our inheritance that we may walk in that grace and that that glory of the father may rest upon us. That through Christ, the star of Jacob, the firstborn, we inherit this covenant of life. And so I hope all of this became clear as Masood brought us to this. And please meditate on these takeaway points, family. They're powerful and they'll connect to next week, which is also awesome. So looking forward to that. God bless you, family. I pray that this message continues to come alive in you and you continue to see yourself. I hope that beyond see, just seeing Christ, that you see Christ. But in seeing Christ, you see yourself, family, and you see the promise of God and his master plan for you. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. And we'll see you next week.